pretty much all been there. Maybe you're standing in line at the DMV, get out your phone and you're surfing the internet, you finally find that DVD box set of the Three Stooges that you've been looking for for so long. <laughs> you're ready to make that purchase. You enter in the credit card number. And then, Fear walks up right next to you. Good morning, Fear says. There's that moment of hesitation, that reconsideration before you hit the submit button. Is, is someone out there? They call it the web. Is there a spider out there somewhere just waiting for my credit card to enter its web so it can snatch it, steal my identity, empty my bank account? Well, the answer is, there's really not. You don't have that much to fear. Today I'm going to show you that there's a lot of hype out there. I'm going to show you how secure encryption really is, and I'm going to tell you a few things that you can do to make yourself that much more confident when making purchases online. So first off, let's talk about the hype. It's easy to listen to the news or pick up a magazine and hear cyber attack, cyber criminal, identity theft. That's what the fear lives on. But let's look at the truth. What is cyber crime? Do you know that most states now include bullying in cyber crime? Spam is a type of cyber crime. If someone sells cocaine or marijuana and does it over email or over the internet, that's a cyber crime. Those aren't people that are sitting out there trying to steal your credit card information. Those are completely unrelated. Let's look at where your credit card information might actually get stolen. If you're a criminal, would you want to hit one person if you could hit 450,000 people? Do I want to go online and try to hack into a knob's computer to get her one credit card number? Or do I want to do like what happened this week where someone hacked into Yahoo servers and took 450,000 usernames and passwords? It's not your computer that they're really after. They want to hit the mother load. They want to go after big corporations with big, massive databases. Now, you'll notice with the Yahoo example, they took usernames and passwords. There was a major, major incident that happened with Sony last year, and it was the same thing. They got usernames passwords, email addresses, physical addresses. They didn't get credit card information. Now, now why is that? If you're going to spend all the time to hack into a big company, why are you taking someone's email address instead of their credit card number? That's where encryption comes in. Credit card companies require that companies encrypt that information but there is nothing requiring them to encrypt your email address, your username, your password, things like that. So let's talk for a moment about encryption. Now I'm gonna get just a little bit technical. Don't worry, the quiz at the end is multiple choice. It'll be fun. <laughs> so we hear encryption all the time. We hear 128-bit, 256-bit. What's that mean? Well, it's talking about the size of the numbers that are used to take your credit card number and jumble them all up so that it can't be recognized. It's very complex. They take two extremely, extremely huge prime numbers and multiply them together. Now, I don't know who in here has had a math class recently, but when you try to take a number and figure out all its factors, it can be a pain. 
when the only two factors of that number are two prime numbers that are hundreds of digits long, it's almost impossible. So let me talk about how impossible that is. With 128-bit encryption, which is the standard if you go online, if you had one trillion computers, and each one was so fast that it could try one billion combinations per second, it would still take two billion years to get your information. That's how secure your credit card is. So, there's a lot of hype. When you have encryption, you're pretty safe. Well, let's talk about things you can do to make sure that you have that security. The first is when, anytime you enter in a username, a password, a credit card number on the internet, somewhere on your browser, there's gonna be a little golden padlock. Make sure you see that and that the padlock is closed. Make sure that you're only going to websites that you know on computers that you know. Don't put your Discover card into the computer at the public library. Make sure that your antivirus is up to date. You don't even have to spend a lot of money. There's a lot of really good free options out there. And also, try to use services like PayPal or some credit card num uh, companies even offer you the ability to get a temporary number that you can use for a single transaction. So be smart, be safe, don't give into the fear and the hype. Look for your padlock and you know your encryption's there.